All right, we are on to SNMP. So SNMP is the simple network management protocol. It has a bunch of RFCs that uh, define it because it's been around for quite a while. So there's been uh, three versions of it really, and uh, so there's three sets of RFCs that, that uh, define it. I'll just list them off if you want to go take a look. 1157, 1901 to 1908, 2273 to 2275. And these really relate to version 1, version 2C, and version 3, which we'll talk about. So SNMP really is used for uh, retrieval of metrics and even the setting of configuration values uh, for devices. So primarily it's used for the retrieval of metrics. So uh, what's the current value of my CPU usage? How's my RAM looking? What's my disk drive usage? Uh, how many connections are going through my firewall? What's the interface utilization on my switch ports? Uh, all sorts of stuff like that. That's that's really what it's used for. And I mentioned in the last video about some of those monitoring applications out there, uh, such as Xenos and Nigeos and things like that. They'll also uh, retrieve information using SNMP, depending on what kind of device it is and how you have it set up. Uh, and it does so over UDP. And it does that uh, on 161 and 162. Now, 161 is used for um, polling, essentially, which I'll talk about. And 162 is used for traps. So polling really is, there's many terms for it, but I, I like to use polling. Uh, we'll have some sort of SNMP server, and we'll have some sort of router out there that we want to get information from. So every five minutes or something like that, my server is going to send out an SNMP request and say, hey, tell me about these values, and then the router will then send back those values. That'll happen over 161. So that's really, that's polling, essentially. Uh, 162 for traps, we have our server, we have our router. When something goes wrong on the router, it has the option of sending a trap, kind of like how it writes to the syslog when something happens. You can also have it send out uh, a trap, which is one way from the router to the server saying, hey, this has happened. So uh, it's a bit more efficient, and it's really only used for uh, like critical down events. So my, my interface got shut off, my power supply is broken, um, you know, my OSPF has, you know, failed or something like that. It'll send traps about those things. You know, other stuff like CPU utilization and RAM and disk and all that that I was talking about, that, that pretty much happens all over the polling method. Uh, so that's the two different kinds. So for the traps to work, though, on the routers and switches and all the other stuff, they have to have the SNMP server configured on them. Otherwise, for polling, the router doesn't need any sort of configuration except for a password, essentially, which I'll talk about. Uh, this It doesn't have to have the IP of the server put into it because the server is the one making the request. Uh, so that's the difference. Usually you'll set up both, though. So how it does this polling, though, uh, it does it so using object identifiers, or OIDs, and those are defined by ISO. So the object IDs are um, like hierarchical values that you can retrieve. So they're very long, and uh, if you look them up, they'll be something like 1.3.1.2.6.2.4.1.1.2.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
I have no idea what that could be. I just made it up. But they, they look very similar to something like that. So what it's basically saying is there's there, there's a standardized um, a number. There's a certain standardized series of values that you can retrieve that everything responds to or should. And uh, then there's some that can be private for certain organizations. They can have their own uh, their own value, like 52 could mean uh, Cisco or something like that. Uh, and then it could have its own special things that you could retrieve under that. Um, and really what it does is it just identifies the value you want to retrieve. So, you know, this whole string means tell me the RAM usage on your first motherboard or your first management card or something like that, you know, whatever it is. What's the CPU usage on processor one? That might be what this is. Um, and note how I end it with dot zero. That's something you should do if when you get into SNMP and all this. Uh, and you don't always have to. Sometimes, depending on what you're configuring, the system will allow you to stop at the dot. Put the dot zero in there. It makes it prevents issues and just makes things easier. Just a tip. Uh, so that's really what they are. And you might have heard of uh, MIBS before. So MIBS, or Management Information Base, is basically like DNS for OIDs. <laughs> so what it really does is uh, it's a collection of OIDs that uh, and describes them for a device. So it'll tell you what kind of data format it is, what the valid ranges are for an OID, um, you know, information about it. It'll have a description for each OID value. So it, it helps you determine what, what you're supposed to be looking for. And you can usually download the MIBs for different devices from the vendor's support site or support group or something like that. Uh, you don't have to have a MIB in order to retrieve things. Uh, you know, if, as long as you know the OID or you can figure out the OID value, then uh, you don't really need the MIB necessarily. So they're really there to just help you. So I mentioned there's several versions. Uh, there's 1, 2, C, and 3. So let me clear this and we'll talk about the versions. Alright, so version 1 uh, was that RFC 1157 and it's not really used anymore. It's old, uh, it's been kind of outmoded. Uh, when a server queries a device and it says, you know, hey I'm polling you, I want to find out about something, it will pull the whole tree. Not just um, not just the specific OID value it wants. So it's very wasteful, it's not efficient at all. Uh, and it does not have any security. It uses a community string, which is the password essentially. And since I mentioned community string, there are two kinds. You can have a read only and a read write. Remember I was talking about uh, how you can set configurations using SNMP? You do so through read write. Um, it is not commonly used because versions 1 and 2C have no encryption or security or authentication or anything like that. So uh, besides the password, the community string that's sent in plain text, there's really no security to it. So uh, setting values with SNMP really hasn't caught on because version 3 took a while to come out and that um, sense of SNMP not being secure has kind of been, you know, pervaced itself throughout the IT and people don't really use it. So it's not common to see people using the read write string but sometimes you will if um, you know you're talking about access points and maybe the controller uses version 3 and a read write string to set things on the access points or something like that. Um, <clears throat> but read only is most commonly used so you'll have a community string uh, you know maybe it's called Cisco hopefully something more complex <laughs> but uh, it'll be uh, in plain text sent whenever the server does a query and it says hey I want to know these values here's the community string let me in 
and then the device will check that and say, yeah, okay, I see that's a read-only value, read-only string. Uh, I'll send back those values to you, and it returns traffic. It's really what it does. Uh, so, but the thing is, you can sniff it with Wireshark or any other you know tools out there, and you can take a look and you know see see what's in that, and it's not very secure. So, version one isn't used uh, really much anymore. Most things people have moved on to version two C. So 2C was uh, RFC 1901 to 1908, and it's really the most common. It doesn't have the complexity of version 3, but it doesn't have the inefficiencies of version 1. Uh, so when it pulls, it just gets that single value. It's uh, more efficient. still uses a community string though in plain text so it's not secure then we also have version 3 which was the RFC 2273 to 2275 and it's uh, increasing in popularity uh, but still getting there and some devices still don't support it uh, even though it's been out for a while uh, and it provides uh, authentication and encryption So this is actually nice, uh, even if you're just retrieving basic statistical data uh, from a device, to have it encrypted and you know people on your network not snooping, whatever it might be, it's probably good because you know there could be a possibility that you're retrieving, you know, some sort of settings that you don't want people to see or IP addresses that you're hoping to keep hidden, things like that. You know, if you can keep it encrypted, that's always good. So 3 is gaining in popularity, but uh, it has that additional layer of complexity of having to set up authentication and encryption settings. So most of people are sticking with 2C still, but uh, hopefully 3 will catch on. So that's really the difference between the 3, uh, and you'll see 2C the most. So what we'll do is we'll set up uh, just real basic on a router. We'll, we'll do an SNMP config and pretend we have a server that collects SNMP data. So we'll go into one of our routers here that I have, and uh, unfortunately this little, like, little fake server doesn't do SNMP collection, but uh, as I mentioned, there's free things out there that do, such as uh, Xenos and Nagios and such, that uh, that will collect this for you and you don't have to pay for it. Alright, so what we're going to do is go into config mode, and uh, basically we just have to set a community string. So what you do is say SNMP server community, and then whatever uh, string you want. So whatever the password is, so that could be you know Cisco <laughs> again. And then you can also define, you know, is it for read only or read write? So most likely you're going to say it's for read only. I'd highly suggest you define, uh, you know, what role it performs. Okay, and we can set some other things as well. So we can do SNMP server and do a location, which ah, it's not in this. But you can do location and then define where it is. So maybe this is the switch closet, uh, or you could, you know, what building it is or something like that. That's a standardized item uh, that anything can be pulled on its location. Uh, you can also do. Uh, contact. So you could say contact uh, Andrew, you know, at the following number, you know, something like that. Uh, you can also do uh, an access list. So you can restrict access uh, for an SNMP server based on uh, an access list. So not only can you restrict it based on community string, but then you could say, well, you can do SNMP and you can respond to it, but only if it comes from one server. So that's actually, you know, so a better way of locking it down at least in some fashion. So you can do SNMP server and say, for this community, so for community Cisco, uh, I'm going to apply a certain access list. So, you know, you could do um, access list, you know, 101 or something like that. Again, this one doesn't do that though, but that's the idea behind it. Uh, and then lastly, the, the one thing that 
you really would probably want to do is uh, turn on traps and you can do enable traps and of course this one's not going to show me but you could enable traps on this sometimes it's under yeah it's not going to do it but you do enable traps and it would enable the ability for it to send traps to things uh, and then you have to tell it where to send it to so we're going to do SNP server host and we could send it to that that fake server I have up there and I'm going to say do it using version 2c and uh, the following password the community string so you know that's how you would set up traps really is just enable traps and then define the host and then whenever something happens it'll just send it on its way so you have uh, some show commands you can do uh, which are pretty basic but you can do show SNMP of course and it'll show you you know what what's currently set up and being used and uh, you can do show SNMP community as well which gives you additional information about that community string but um, this one doesn't do it <laughs> so that's really it for SNMP um, you just have to add a community string uh, and potentially set up traps with enable traps and defining a host uh, and that'll set pretty much uh, you know what you'll want to know to receive and you can define it even more so uh, if you're on a standard iOS device uh, you'd probably see a whole bunch of options in there under SNMP server and you can limit it to different types of you know things to be sent with traps you can uh, one of the ones you might be interested in is environmental so you send traps only for environmental things like my fan is broken my motherboard is too hot my power supply has failed things like that um, those are useful ones to receive with traps so with that we're gonna wrap this up and uh, we'll touch on NetFlow for a minute